What's going on? It's Paul here, and in this episode, we're covering Chicago's million-dollar suburbs on the North Shore. We're going to focus on the ones closest to the city of Chicago, so sticking within Cook County, and we're going to rank them based on median home sales price as of January 2023. We're going to start with the most expensive, and I'm going to give you an idea on the types of homes you can expect to find in each of these areas, along with local dining hotspots and attractions, and maybe even some notable names that you might recognize that are associated with some of these areas. So since we're talking about the North Shore, let's dive in. So, first up on the list, the Village of Kenilworth. The Village of Kenilworth has a median home sales price as of January 2023 of $2.15 million. You'll find the zip code regularly ranks on some of the highest median household income lists in the U.S. The village has got a pretty small population of 2,514 individuals, and it's located along the UPN Metro train line running into OTC or Ogilvy Transportation Center, uh, which is the train line that runs through much of the North Shore towns. Kenilworth has its own beach with a terrace overlooking it, and the housing stock here is truly stunning. You can spend hours just taking in the beauty of the homes. The area was built as a planned community in the late 1800s, and many of its historic homes have been preserved or restored. For the local public school option, students attend Joseph Sears School, or just Sears School for short, and you'll find the school ranks very highly in terms of test scores and often has other schools look to as a model of education. Sears School is a rarity in that students attend from junior kindergarten through eighth grade, whereas many other of the surrounding suburbs will divide up the students between two or three schools for elementary school and middle school. A fun little known fact is you don't need to live in Kenilworth to attend Sears School as there is a very small part of Wilmette along Chestnut Avenue and also a portion of Winnetka, south of Winnetka Avenue and east of Ridge that attend the Kenilworth School System. Kenilworth is quite intimate in size. You won't find many options in terms of dining and shops, though there are some fun spots like Great Coast Commons where you'll find a diverse menu with something for everyone, including the kids, and you are just a hop skip away from options in Winnetka and Wilmette. Entry-level home prices, so the bottom 10%, can be found for under $750,000, though in that mix, you do compete with buyers looking for teardowns or large rehab projects. The top 10% will be over $3 million, with the top 5% being over $4 million, and where you'll find homes bordering $10 million, predominantly along or just off of Sheridan and the lakefront at the highest end. Now, most of the North Shore will have property taxes between 1.5% and 2.25% of the home's value. That doesn't always match the assessed value of the home. And so in Kenilworth, you may find some homes with property tax bills over $200,000 a year. All right, number two on the list is the village of Winnetka. Winnetka has a median home sales price of $1.477 million. It's got a population of 12,744, which is roughly five times larger than that of Kenilworth. You'll find lakefront homes in this area can go for 12 or more million dollars. Bottom 10% of homes are the entry level to the area. You can find for 850,000 or less, while the top 10% will be three and a quarter million and up with some truly magnificent homes, old and new. Some homes steeped in history, like this 1937 uh, home built on one and a half acres uh, that Arthur Nielsen had built. And this home last sold in 2022 for $6.8 million. Now, if the Nielsen name rings a bell, it may be because Arthur Nielsen started the Nielsen Company, known for marketing research and the television Nielsen ratings. Nielsen was an avid tennis player, and he has a local park district-owned tennis center named after him. Another home that's made headlines over the years in uh, Winnetka, you'll find, is this one designed by architect Richard Landry, who is sometimes referred to as the king of the mega mansion. He's designed homes for notable names such as Michael Bolton, Wayne Gretzky, and Rod Stewart. He also designed a home for Kenny G, and also happened to design the home that Michael Jackson was renting when he passed away. Now, back to Winneka though, this mansion reportedly cost $40 million to build. It came on the market in 2009 for $32 million, though buyers at that price range, even the Chicagoland market, are few and far between. So the home sat on the market with numerous price reductions till it eventually sold for $8.75 million in 2020. 
Now, that doesn't mean you don't get the rare occasion where a billionaire comes along and decides to try and snap up land along the lakefront to the tune of $24 million and then attempts to maneuver a deal with the park district to swap public park land for private land in an attempt to, to assemble a huge sizable piece of lakefront property to build a mega mansion. Now, not everyone was a fan of this plan, especially so when at one point the idea of building a steel privacy wall came into the picture, so pushback ensued. But what's a billionaire to do in a situation like this? Well, for one, spend another $16 million to buy the mansion next door, because one way or another, his family will be moving forward with their plans to live in Winnetka. But that's a story for a different video. Winnetka truly is a beautiful place to call home, so you can't blame them for wanting to build there. Winnetka is home to New Trier Township High School, which serves the North Shore suburban communities of Glencoe, Kenilworth, Northfield, Wilmette, Winnetka, and portions of Glenview and Northbrook. Now, freshmen are housed in the Northfield, Illinois campus, uh, while the other campus here is in Winnetka. Sophomores, juniors, and seniors uh, attend the Winnetka campus. Winnetka's shops and retails are located along Green Bay Road, primarily focused around two of its train stations about a mile apart. The one further north is Hubbard Woods. Where you'll find the home of many amazing restaurants and shops, including one I personally love, which is called Spirit Elephant. And you can see their cuisine in some of these pictures here. Now, you may be surprised to hear, it's all vegan. Though looking at some of the pictures, you may not have realized that because it really is done very well. Now, the other concentration is near the Winneka station where you can grab a quick bite of tacos or a sandwich at Stacked and Folded restaurant or the former service station turned restaurant named Fred's Garage. Uh, some of the more recent additions in the area like Pomeroy French Bistro or 501 Local are definitely also spots worth checking out. Winneka is home to several beautiful public beaches with access controlled by beach passes. Some notable names here you may find former Illinois Governor Bruce Rauner. Uh, him and his wife Diana also lived in Winneka for many years. While some sports related figures would be NFL quarterback Jay Cutler and Kristen Cavalieri, uh, who's a reality TV personality, uh, they've also lived in Winneka for a time. And another name you might recognize is former Chicago Cubs pitcher Kerry Wood. And number three on the list, the Village of Glencoe. The Village of Glencoe has a median home sales price of $1.337 million, and it's got a population of 8,894. Here you can enjoy the day at the Chicago Botanic Gardens, check out the performing arts at the Writers Theater, or take a stroll through the neighborhoods where you'll find the works of many historically significant architects, such as Frank Lloyd Wright, Keck and Keck, Howard Van Doren Shaw, and many more. Roughly 10% of the homes sell for under 700000 with approximately a third coming in at a million or less. And the top 10% clocking in at $3.5 million or higher. And naturally, in a highly desirable area such as Glencoe, you'll even find standout purchases like the one made by the co-founder of Groupon. Head over to Hometown Coffee and Juice, which can draw quite the crowd for breakfast and lunch, and where you'll enjoy cold-pressed juices, smoothies, salads, and sandwiches. If you've got the little ones with you, they'll enjoy the Friends Park, conveniently located across the street. And you can also check out Guild Hall, where you can enjoy cocktails and lunch and dinner fare while also pleasing the kids. Number four on our list is the Village of Northfield, with a median home sales price of $1.063 million and a population of 5751 You'll find many homes over the million dollar mark have much larger lots in Northfield compared to much of the North Shore. Many homes have a half acre or even an acre plus lot sizes. Entry level homes in the area tend to be on smaller lots, but can be found in the four hundred dollars to $500,000 range. The top 10% of homes are over $2 million with the occasional $3 to $5 million sale. Overall, you'll find more value here for the money with less of the urban suburb feel. Some notable residents at one point or another here include retired Chicago Bears player Lance Briggs or Red Solo Cub founder Robert Leo Holzman. You'll also find that the owner of the Chicago Bulls and the Chicago White Sox, Jerry Reinsdorf, uh, has also resided in Northfield. Now, Northfield has a small downtown area where you'll find some shops and restaurants such as the Hap Inn and Taco Nano. Now, the village takes up 3.23 square miles, and as I had mentioned before, it's got a population of 5,751. Compare that to number five on our list, the village of Wilmette. The village of Wilmette's got a median home sales price of $915,000. It takes up 5.409 square miles, but it's got a population of 28,000, 
170. So we can see it's not quite double the size of Northfield, but the population is easily four to five times that. Now, approximately 10% of the homes in Wilmette sell for $500,000 or less, and you're more likely to find these options west of Green Bay Road and more concentrated west of Skokie Boulevard. Now, even though the median home sales price here is $915,000, almost half of the homes are over a million dollars, with 10% of the homes selling for over $2 million, and approximately the top 1% or fraction thereof going for over $4 million. Wilmette has a beautiful lakefront park called Gilson Park, and that overlooks Gilson Beach. Gilson Beach is separated into two sections. There is a paid section, which is overwatched by lifeguards during peak season, and there's also a free section, which allows you to take a stroll on the beach, get your feet wet in the water, and work on your tan. Uh, off to the south of that beach, you'll find the dog park. If you're finding this information helpful and would like me to make more content like this, all I ask you to do is to high five that like button. And as a thank you, here's a picture of the Baha'i Temple, a local Wilmet architectural marvel that is on the U.S. National Register of Historic Places. And it's only one of eight Baha'i temples in the world, with each one being unique in architecture. Thanks for hitting that like button and make sure you subscribe to get notified when I do release more videos like this. So, moving along. Downtown Wilmette provides many dining options, ranging from Neapolitan pizza at Napolita, Japanese fare at Torino Ramen, and of course, you can't miss newcomer Sofia Steak. Now, naturally, this is just a small sampling of attractions and dining hotspots you can expect to find in the North Shore suburbs. If there's a specific one I haven't mentioned, feel free to drop it in the comments below for everybody to find out. Number six on the list is the Village of Glenview with a median home sales price of $700,000 with a population of 48,705 in a 14 square mile span. So significantly larger than any other area on this list. And so the types of homes that you have here is a much larger span from starter homes to larger homes. You'll find that a third of the homes here uh, go for a million dollars or more with the top 3% selling for over 2 million and the smallest fraction of homes selling for over $4 million. You'll get more home and land for your money than if you went east to the suburbs along the lake. The schools here Whereas most of the North Shore suburbs feed into the New Trier High School system, only small sections of Glenview and Northbrook do. And the majority of Glenview and Northbrook uh, areas attend District 225 schools for Glenbrook South and Glenbrook North. Some areas, especially along the outskirts, do attend different schools. If we're looking at the million dollar areas, you predominantly are going to find that in three concentrations. Uh, the Glen being one of them, the downtown Glenview area being another, and then East Glenview being the third one, uh, with other areas having less uh, concentrations of million dollar homes. The village of Glenview has two train stations taking you to, to downtown Chicago, one of which is the downtown Glenview station offering express train service to downtown Chicago. With a larger geographic area and population, you'll find many shopping and dining options, both chain and local options, covering a wide span of culinary adventures from Greek to Chinese, Korean, Italian, Japanese, and so many more. Visit the Glen where you'll find Chuck Lager, Yard House, The Oak, and Wildfire, just to name a few, in downtown Glenview, which is home to the Glenview Grind, Glenview House, and also Gusto Italian Restaurant. Glenview's very own Wagner Farm offers many family adventures, or just stop by to pick up some fresh eggs, or check out the farmer's market across the street. Glenview is also home to several breweries, such as 1090, Makushla Brewing, and Hangar 2, which is a Tangled Roots Brewing Restaurant, located by Apt Electronics. Since we're on the topic of apt electronics, also located in Glenview, this is the mecca of shopping for everything from your TV to appliances, furniture. It's got an on-site candy store, a massive musical fountain, and even Santa can't resist but make several appearances through the holiday season. And if you stop by over the weekend, they got fresh baked cookies for free. And number seven, the village of Northbrook has got a median home sales price of $699,950. This village is also larger in terms of size, so you do have a larger spread in terms of the types of homes that you're going to find here. The population is 35,222, and you'll find roughly about a fourth of the homes here are going to be a million dollars or more, with the top end really topping out between two and four million dollars. You'll find a downtown Northbrook train station taking you into the city, along with dining spots such as the Landmark Inn, 
for bar fare or head to Francesca's North or House 406 if you're in the mood for some more traditional sit down. Feel like family? When you head over to Francesco's Hole in the Wall, where you'll catch the home-cooked Italian menu written in dry erase marker, or dine at Pinstripes, where you can also get your bocce and bowling game on. And last, but definitely not least, on our list is Evanston, spanning across 7.8 miles. Evanston has a population of 78,110, and it's home to Northwestern University. Evanston's median home sale price is $655,000 and has a very large, diverse mix of housing options with the entry-level 10% of homes selling for under $350,000, while the top 10% clock in at $1.5 million or higher. Only a dozen or so cross the $3 million mark, predominantly in Southeast and Northeast Evanston. You'll find some truly architecturally magnificent homes at the million dollar mark or higher, with around 30% having been built before 1900 and almost 70% before the 1930s. You'll also find the planning layout similar to that of Chicago in that Evanston's design utilized alleys. So you'll find Evanston has 147 miles of streets and 76 miles of alleyways. Evanston has a much denser population in the downtown area, which supports more high-rise buildings than what you will find anywhere else on the North Shore, which also lends itself to some condos crossing over the million-dollar mark. Evanston's train options are not only the UPN Metroline, which runs up the North Shore, but also the L train service, which is common throughout Chicago. The purple line of the L runs through Evanston, with its final stop to the north being the Linden stop at the southern end of Wilmette, just north of Ryan Field, which is Northwestern University's football stadium. Speaking of education, Evanston has its own high school, Evanston Township High School, with an enrollment of approximately 3,700 students. And a fun little known fact, a small portion of neighboring Skokie residents in an area referred to as Skevinston also attend Evanston High School. Evanston offers six beaches and numerous parks that line the shore of Lake Michigan. On the dining front, you can get your Pan-Asian and bubble tea fix at Joy Yi, or hop over to Buffalo Joe's on Clark Street for what I consider to be the best fried saucy buffalo wings in all of Chicagoland. Hey, if you've got a better wing spot, let me know. I'm all ears. Check out French Moroccan cuisine at Newcomer Latour, backed by restaurateur Amy Morton and Chef Debbie Gould, or stop in at the Peckish Pig for your gastropub fare. You can enjoy vegetarian comfort food at Blind Faith Cafe or grab a Loretta at Sarkis, which has been serving the area for over 50 years now. Evanston's got a ton of restaurants, and I'm sure I'm missing some great ones, so please do let me know if you've got a favorite in the comments section. You can also check out some of the local breweries, including Temperance Beer Company or Sketchbook Brewing. Or if you're in the mood for some live music, definitely check out who's performing at Space, which is a great small venue. Names you might recognize tied to Evanston are the Cusack family. Joan and John Cusack are a couple that come to mind, but the family is steeped in entertainment history. Another name you might recognize is Zach Guilford, who grew up in Evanston and not only attended Evanston Township High School, but also graduated from Northwestern. Now, this video focused on the million-dollar suburbs of Chicago within Cook County. There are other suburbs with the million-dollar options getting further away from the city into Lake County. Just north of Glencoe, you'll find Highland Park, home to Michael Jordan's famed home. Highland Park has roughly a quarter of its home sell for over a million dollars. It's got a median sale price at $695,000. Similarly, further north, Lake Bluff is located along Lake Michigan, but has a lower median price at $642,000, and roughly 20% of its homes sell over the million-dollar mark. In Lake County, you'll also find Lake Forest, which has seen median prices catapult almost 60% since the spring of 2020, and the median prices are now ringing in at $1.17 million. So that rounds out our list of Chicago's million-dollar suburbs on the North Shore. Let me know your thoughts or questions in the comments section below. And if you haven't yet done so, make sure to like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. If you have questions about any of the areas I mentioned, drop them in the comments below or reach out to me directly. If you're considering making a move to any of these areas, I'm happy to have the conversation with you and see what I can do to help. This is especially crucial if you'll be working with a relocation company, as it does help for me to pre-register anyone that will have relocation benefits. See you in the next video.